It's a bear. Got that one right. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in Lauderdale by the Sea. Look at what a lovely day it is out there. I don't know if some of you woke up here that live in South Florida, but man, we woke up to uh, some uh, uh, foggy skies. I haven't seen fog forever in a day. And it was just, you couldn't see uh, beyond a couple blocks here in the ocean, which is fogged over. But it's not the weather report. It is the weather report for precious metals today, though, so <laughs> going to be a quick one today, folks. I am just overwhelmed. I've got my staff at a show up in Lakeland. I'm not attending it, but my staff is, and uh, I'm pretty much really swamped here in the store today uh, since this morning, and I'm short help. So one of those days, you know what it's like. Let's take a look at precious metal and take a look at silver today, too. Great opportunity, as I said, to buy the freaking dip. And uh, where are we at right now? I'm glad I waited a little bit, too, because the monkey hammering took place a little bit later than I expected. Uh, we're at 1779 gold at the moment. Remember, it's uh, 1249 noontime. And again, sorry about the lateness of this report. Uh, 1775 being the high, or low, and 1788 being the uh, the high. Kind of, you know, meager $10 range. Looks like gold has about gone down. Uh, hey, I shouldn't open my big freaking trap here, but... You know, gold seems to be being left alone, kind of. The monkey hammer is primarily happening in silver, and as any wonder, we know exactly what the deal is with that. Uh, and I'm not going to beat that dead horse today. Uh, if you haven't watched this last week's show, me talking about CFTC being inept or uh, uh, <clears throat> complicit or both, uh, and uh, in my opinion, and then, uh, you know, the other things we've been talking about, manipulation. But, again, I'm, it's just, God, we whipped that horse so much today. I'm going to just get through it real quick uh, and give you my assessment and also tell you some deals that we have here in the store. Uh, 2190 is the low. I saw, I think it actually thought, saw it a little bit lower than I thought, 2188, but uh, it says 2190 being the low here, 2249 being the high. It's just sitting right on that psychological number. You know, we talk about psychological numbers. 22 is a psychological number, even. Uh, 2199 versus 2205. Uh, I know, take a look, isn't it? I mean, it's like mind games that they play with these things. It really is. Uh, but 2249 being the high overnight. And uh, platinum, a little whacking two there at 930, 970 is a low, 961. You know, they're kind of staying in this range. I'm curious to see how the year ends out and what happens in the new year. Um, you know, when things explode to the upside, uh, and, and at some point they will, you know, especially with precious metals. I mean, it's just part of history. We've seen it all the time. Not a matter of if, when is really when uh, we see the uh, uh, button smack to the upside here. Uh, you're going to wake up. You're all going to be surprised, including me. I'm sure I'm going to be surprised as well. Uh, so uh, let's take a look in when these uh, markets got monkey hammered overnight, 24-hour uh, spot gold chart. Uh, New York, of course. Where else but in the comics markets, pretty much. Looks like last night, uh, here's to today's market is the green line and overnight markets before yesterday's close, which is the red line. So yesterday, you can see it kind of wavered between that 1785 and 1790 mark. Uh, here's the green last night's markets after they open. Uh, again, 1785, 1790. And uh, lo and behold, let's see here. Where is that green line? Well, it looks like gold got smacked down in the London markets last night. Uh, London or Globex. Again, I really can't tell which one. Globex is open 24 hours, and I believe this is about the time uh, London would have been open, too. I've got to take a look, but I think London was open at this time as well. Uh, <clears throat> so there you go. There's a 24-hour spot price. Silver, uh, we can almost say for certain when that happened. Look, where's the New York Comex market? Right about there. <laughs> so uh, it's almost like people were anticipating silver to get hit and uh, 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 kind of ran it down when the New York NYMEX market opened. But look where this occurs with silver. Silver is where the most manipulation occurs that I'm familiar with in, in metals markets. Uh, however, don't be discouraged. If you're new to my videos, you, you know that all games and all casinos and all markets are rigged. Everything in your life is rigged, so get over it. Pull up your big boy, big girl pants and, and realize that your entire life has been manipulated since you've been a kid. And uh, Santa Claus, whatever, you know, Easter Bunny, whatever you may believe in as a kid. Um, <laughs> the aliens, okay. Well, maybe they do exist, but um, everything's manipulated. So don't let that discourage you. If you don't play, you can't win. You know, you know how you win at the uh, casino table? You know how you win at the comics casino table? You know how they got the game rigged. And every time they freaking hit that thing lower, you just nail it and buy some more physical. Of course, that's just my opinion. I'm not giving you any advice investment advice here uh, when to pull the trigger how to pull the trigger I'm just telling you in my opinion buy the fucking dips you know uh, <clears throat> and that's what I've been doing so we got some sideways action here it looks like it's trying to hang on to that 22 mark let's do a quick uh, update here and 
yeah, she's just hanging on to that 22 mark. Again, fucking psychological levels. 22, uh, like with gold, 18, 19, you know, 17. These really uh, mythical, like, oh, God, if it hits that, it's all over. If it hits that, it's ridiculous. You know, you're on a roller coaster ride to the moon, as I always say, with gold and silver. Uh, it's it, it's just going to continue to go up and up and up. It's never going to go bankrupt. It's a good, you know, it's probably the best. I would say that uh, from a historical standpoint, gold and silver are the best uh, uh, wealth preservation uh, items that anyone can buy out there, period. Uh, as long as you're buying physical gold and you're not buying uh, uh, paper, again, uh, I don't like the idea of, it, I can't call it second party, third party risk. Someone thought of a great new uh, uh, term. So. Um, you don't have to trust someone else to hold it for you and potentially lose everything. So, you know, hold it on your own, as I've always said. I'd prefer it. A little tougher with silver, but it's not impossible, all right? Unless you're a multi-billionaire, you know, and then it's pretty hard to store a couple million dollars worth of silver easily. You can make a floor out of it, though, a raised floor in your closet. All right, uh, let's take a look at markets overnight and uh, just, hey, buy the dips in my opinion you're going to do well on this especially if you're in this if you're in this for getting rich quick I, I suggest you go put some money in the cryptos if you want to get rich quick you can also get poor real quick uh, however if you want if you're in this for wealth preservation in my opinion keep stacking gold and silver physical uh, let's take a look at what uh, our markets kind of like weird today as well in the stock markets and uh, Bitcoin also kind of down last I looked let's take a refresh here um, again, here's another casino where you can get rich quick or lose it all. So, and uh, but the problem with the problem with uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, we just don't know where they're going to go in the future. There's such new type uh, financial casinos that uh, you know will they be here another five years from now, ten years from now? Uh, you know, time will tell, history will tell. Uh, but we do know that gold and silver has been around for 5,000 years, never gone bankrupt, and it will be here tomorrow for sure, and likely another hundred years from now. Well, let's take a look at the gold and silver ratio, which I think is pretty important today because we're starting to see some things change here. Uh, I'm going to quickly ask my Siri here, and uh, let's take a look here. 1778.2 divided by 22.05. Wow, our current ratio is at 80.64 at the moment, so that ratio is rising again. And what, again, this always tells me. I'm doing a lot of begins today, sorry about that. This always tells me that uh, either the price of silver is too low or the price of gold is too high. Based on how gold's just been maintaining where it's at, uh, I'm gonna say that silver is just way too freaking low. But again, that's my opinion, that 80, 80 to one ratio, let's take a look at that ratio chart again too. And uh, <clears throat> you know, we typically uh, have sat in this range right here. If you do an average for the last 30 plus years or something, we're probably right in that 65 to 1 area, I'd say, right about here. If you were to draw an average line, and tough to say, I, I haven't done the averages myself, I'm just doing a visual average based on a chart. Uh, but, uh, and here's your uh, market where silver was really cheap compared to gold coming up to 2002, especially 2019. Uh, gold prices shot up dramatically and silver uh, just kind of lagged behind. Boy, and then silver just took off shortly after that. And again, that was 2020 uh, when we saw that happen. And uh, again, our averages are back down to where they were, that 65 to 1, and we're moving back up to 80 to 1. Uh, look at other bull markets here, for example. This doesn't go back to, uh, let's see if we go all years. Uh, there we go, that's all years. Well, there's a, a bull market. Take a look at that ratio, 28. I think it was low as 15 to 1 in, uh, th during the Super Bowl of uh, 1980 you can call that a Super Bowl because in dollars today it would just surpass any bulls we've seen since then uh, and uh, I actually think the power of uh, physical buyers out there is far greater than what the Hunt brothers could have done back then and that's what we're looking at as far as physical sh uh, above ground not shortages but above yeah above ground shortages of availability above ground availability is really thin right now um, so let's take a look at our next bull market here, which would have been 2010, 2012. Look at that ratio too. I'm pretty much can assure you that was during the height of gold and silver thereabouts. And then all of a sudden in, uh, well, that, that ratio starts to tighten up to where we are again. Look at that though. That's uh, again, 2020. Uh, what other markets to take a look at? Well, not too much here, but the ratio is really out of whack. It's at 80 to 1 right now, folks. So, uh, again, what does that tell me? Gold's too high or silver's too low. 
uh, as a as I'm not a betting man, but if I was a betting man, I'd say that silver is much too low at this point. Well, if you're tired of the bullshit and you're tired of uh, uh, COMEX, uh, uh, CME Group allowing COMEX whales to uh, overrun the silver markets and manipulate the markets down consist consistently with short positions while they've never taken, I won't say never, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure they have never taken the long position, the big banks out there. And how do we know these guys manipulate the price of gold and silver? As well, a lot of them have been convicted all already. Look at JP. Uh, and who did it? Uh, CFTC? I don't know. Uh, commodity, future trade, uh, th these people right here, pardon my expression, are either inept or they're complicit, and I've said that. Again, that's my opinion, okay? Uh, we've seen them do absolutely nothing to stop this. They've allowed this uh, uh, manipulative, in my opinion, fraudulent behavior to go on with these big commercial short positions in silver for, for decades now, and they've done nothing about it. They've cost retail buyers billions of dollars across the world, and I'm sure they've cost miners a lot of money as well. And uh, look, well, who runs the operation now? Uh, Roston, B. Ham, and Commissioner Don DeBerry. Well, I've been filing some complaints with these guys and making phone calls, and uh, I actually called a legislator today uh, that uh, uh, sits. I didn't realize it, but the CFTC, when I called to find out, you know, who is their bosses, um, they're, you know, they didn't really say too much, but then they finally told me, well, Congress. And then I said, well, who in Congress? What committee? Then they finally told me the Agricultural Committee. And uh, I went to look and see who's on the Agricultural Committee, the congressmen and congress ladies that are on the Agricultural Committee. Folks, we're in big trouble. <laughs> if we expect these people in Congress to understand what is going on in these markets, uh, I won't say we're in big trouble. Actually, I think you know, I, I catch the right person, the right guy, and explain it to him the right way. We might get some congressmen calling the CFTC, especially if enough of us do it. Well, anyway, I'll get those phone numbers and emails ready for you because we can flood their emails and phones, uh, legislators, CFTC, COMEX, uh, with phone calls and emails. Uh, and maybe they'll start to pay attention, you know. It's just about time. The, 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 the screwing has got to end. Well, that's, and again, as far as being screwed, it's, uh, it's pointed out many times that for you physical stackers out there in gold and silver, this is an opportunity. Don't look at this as a bad thing. They can't keep the prices down forever. However, you got to get sick of it and point it out to them at some point and say, hey, listen, clean up your backyard, clean up your yard, you dumbasses. You know what I mean? That's what Comex needs to do, and that's what the CFTC should be making them do. Uh, clean up your backyard, man. Uh, your credibility is going to pretty much zero like other government agencies. You need to do something before you have zero credibility with the public. Um, but anyway, I'll get you phone numbers and all that stuff, and we'll start, we'll start doing a campaign uh, calling these people. And, and not to harass them, but to call them and let them know we're not happy with what's going on. These people right here would be a good place to start, along again with some comics people and some legislators, which I'll give you names. I'm going to compile a list and do a show on just on that. Uh, portfolio, Seeking Alpha. <clears throat> well, uh, here's my little fake faux portfolio of stocks and bonds that I'm thinking about buying. How am I doing today? Not so good with the miners. Uh, social media uh, and technology. Better with technology and consumables. And consumables is just my term for uh, uh, food products and stuff like that. Things that you eat, you know, restaurants, food, uh, food service providers, whatever. Um, I like BurgerFi, by the way. So <laughs> I'd like to eat their burgers. I don't know anything about the company, but I kind of been watching them because they're a local company. Again, this is just me playing around, having fun. Let's move out of this, though. It's nothing to do with stocks and bonds and. Uh, I got to make this show really quick today. ZH, what's going out there in the uh, the world uh, that corporate news doesn't talk about? Well, let's take a look. Irish central bankers raise gold reserves by 33 percent, worried by inflation. Uh, I'm going to get a quick sip of coffee here. Forgive me, one sec. Mm. I should play pause music between that, you know, like elevator music. <laughs> uh, all right, so, uh, you know, and one of the things here, this is a great example here. Irish central banks raise gold reserves by 33%. Irish central banks, central bankers are the people that run the world, folks. They run the countries. The Irish central bank runs at, you know, Ireland. They run Ireland. They, and the U.S. Federal Reserve, the central bank, uh, runs the world, uh, runs the dollar, and whoever uses the dollar is ran by, well, anyway, you get the point. And what are the people that, that a lot of people say that the central bankers are stupid and uh, uh, that they've uh, screwed the whole deal up and that uh, they're the ones that continually making mistakes and this is why the economy screwed up. Yes and no. I kind of think more no. Uh, central bankers inherit a sinking ship from the day we went into the fiat currency world. Uh, you can really say 1913 when the Fed was created, when, when the dollar power 
uh, uh, really started coming down dramatically. Uh, then FDR took us off the uh, uh, gold, you know, or actually closed the gold window for Americans. Uh, you know, then all of a sudden you saw uh, a decline in the value of the dollar, buying power of the dollar as well. Uh, you got the depression too. Well, and then you've got uh, uh, Nixon closing the window in 1970s. And if you take a look at charts, you'll see that uh, that was uh, the major decline and the nail in the coffin for the U.S. dollar. And uh, that's why gold's been going up continually since 1972. I'm going to say something uh, with confidence that I don't think many people will say out there. We've been in a bull market since 1970. When Nixon closed the gold window, gold has been in a I would say cyclical maybe, I'm not sure if the right term, but bull market. We've been in a bull market since we went off the gold standard. Fact, period, that's it. Uh, have we seen uh, uh, you know, the roller coaster valleys downward? Yes, but the overall ride is to the moon with gold and the same thing with silver. Anyways, I digress here. Let's take a look at some of these other articles. Uh, wow, that's about time Evergrande has finally defaulted. Um, I guess what everybody's curious about is that they have defaulted what effect does that have on the economy? I'm not going to read about that right now. Uh, if, if you have a thought about it, please make it in comments below. Uh, Evergrande is defaulted, and I think the way they did it is they slowly let them default, not everybody get ready for it, so there wasn't major panic. Uh, in 2008, they let things, oh, there goes my coin. In 2008, they let things uh, collapse overnight, more or less, and that created massive panic. I think if central bankers and governments have learned anything is that when this greatest bubble of all time finally burst and everything starts to take a giant shit, they're going to wind it down as slow as they can. Uh, that'll lessen the panic somehow. Uh, don't ask me how, but that's kind of my, uh, uh, that's, I think, what the central bankers are going to do. All currencies and all central banks are, are like horses racing for the glue factory. The winner is the last horse to get to the glue factory, and that will probably be the U.S. dollar. Uh, let's take a look at some other things here. National crisis, no wonder you can't not have a national crisis when you force people uh, that, that were there for you the whole time to do something they don't want to do. Uh, wow. Anyways, let's just avoid that subject because I'm sure that's out there everywhere. Cargo thieves, that doesn't help, that doesn't help. Uh, that guy's an idiot in my opinion. But again, just my opinion, I'm allowed to have an opinion. I think he costs the economy uh, billions and billions of dollars, that guy right there, which is good for the price of gold and silver, if you think about it. If you look at it from a selfish standpoint, uh, they just kind of uh, screwed the economy in general, uh, these people, and uh, again, that's good for gold and silver. So for any of you who think, well, why does he discuss politics? Well, because politics tries directly into the price of gold and silver, and you can't deny that if people fuck up the economy, it's going to be good for gold and silver, okay? And that's exactly what these people did. Uh, let's just move along here. Uh, used car prices, yeah, we know that. You know what? Not too much here. I've got to go. I am busier than a, a one-armed paper hanger, and my apologies to my one-armed friends out there and my paper hanger friends. <laughs> and let me move into uh, yesterday. Oh, I'd like to thank all the Wall Street apes out there. Keep stacking, folks, and uh, keep doing what you do. You are certainly helping uh, take more silver off the market, and uh, also you're helping spread the word as well. Let's take a look at yesterday's video here. See, oh, and, and the moderators too out there. I'd like to thank the Reddit Duck Wall Street monitors for allowing me to post my videos out there with my varied opinions. And uh, so far, I haven't seen really any censorship. I think one of my videos was taken down, but probably by mistake. But other than that, they've been pretty gracious. Thank you guys and ladies. Uh, CFTC in um, yesterday's report. CFTC, boy, I'm poking the bear here. It's a good thing that CFTC doesn't regulate anything I do that I'm aware of. <laughs> so, uh, but the CFTC, uh, my report yesterday, inept, complicit, or both. All right, um, I'd say both, probably. You know, more. Uh, I'd say uh, uh, inept on the uh, uh, lower uh, spectrum of employees there. And again, that's not a fault on them. They're probably hardworking people that like us. Uh, but they probably just not privy to the facts that the people in the higher up positions are. So I'd say uh, in the higher up positions, in my opinion, in the CFTC, probably complicit. In the lower positions, probably inept. Uh, and again, not their fault. Okay, you, you can, you, You're going to be inept if you don't have all the information. So, uh, And I believe that the uh, CFTC, the upper echelon, they have all the information. They know, they know exactly what's going on. All right? Again, my opinion. Let's take a look at yesterday's comments. I'm going to kind of breeze through these real fo quick, folks, because I see my the, the two guys that I do have working for me. I can see them on my camera, and they're panicking right now. <laughs> there's, there's a look of desperation and panic on their faces. 
Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. All you regulars out there, you guys are the best. Happy holidays, too, to everyone out there. Um, Jeremy, I won't be in Lakeland. I've got a couple people up there for me, but my father runs that show, the Lakeland Collectorama show, and that, that show is running uh, today, tomorrow, uh, I think through the weekend. I'm not quite sure if it's on Sunday. I think it ends on Saturday. And uh, yes, exactly, new money coming out. The game is rigged, but of course the game is rigged, but if you don't play, you can't win. And if you don't win, then you're gonna just be a broke motherfucker as you get older, so excuse my language. I'm sorry about that. Uh, they are part of the corrupt, yep, yep, that's true. Uh, only reason I would hit the dislike button because you only sell locally. <laughs> oh, dude, I wish I had the ability to sell online. I would, but I'm just a small local country coin dealer and precious metal dealer trying to eke out the living in the big city here in South Florida. Uh, but thanks for watching, Jeff. I really appreciate it, and you have yourself a wonderful day, sir. Uh, Silver Bullet, uh, both, I agree with you. Uh, CFTC Judge George Painter resigned his position, stating that the game is rigged against the investor, and there was an agreement to do so in place. He refused to be part of it. Uh, oh, very interesting. You know, I've got to actually look up CFTC George Painter here. And forgive me for doing this because I'm afraid I'll forget if I, if I go through this video and don't do this. But hey, I'll do this together with you. Let's just look up George Painter real quick. And uh, let's see, fair what I'll find. Uh, you know what? Um, judge finds mayor committed fraud, levels fines, um, entered an initial decision. All right, well, we'll take a look at that uh, in a little bit. Uh, and uh, I'll look at it and look into that. Hey, thanks for that information. That is really cool. I'll read more about that silver bullet. Uh, Akisha, in case you don't know it, more stocks reach your 50 to two weeks, lows 13 to 18 at any time of year. Uh, oh, it's, I think I knew it vaguely a little bit, you know, because again, I don't play too much in the stock and equity markets, but I think that when these markets take a giant crap, and they will, not if, uh, not if they will, but they, when they take a giant crap, uh, I'm going to jump in there and buy some stocks that have some good fundamentals behind them. Hopefully, we'll see if they survive. Uh, true, 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 true. Thanks, Jason. Stephen, uh, uh, third party risk comes from corporate information. Uh, the first party is the corporate entity, the second party. Yeah, Stephen, I really appreciate that. Again, as I mentioned yesterday, um, um, I think I was just using the wrong term, my ignorance. Sorry about that, folks. Um, when someone else holds your gold, that's not really third party risk. It doesn't seem to be second party risk. And uh, ooh, someone made a comment up here, what you could call it, and where did that go? I would much prefer to hang out on my own silver boat with a tax at 20%. Oh, you, Ricky, I feel for you, man. UK has ridiculous taxes. Uh, the Europe, European countries have ridiculous, absolutely ludicrous taxes out there. Kind of where the United States is slowly heading, unless some of us patriots uh, uh, put a stomp on it. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do. So, Ricky, uh, appreciate you watching and keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you know, any way you can find to legally avoid paying that tax, go for it, man. I agree 100%. Legally. Notice I said legally. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Ricky. Uh, thank you, uh, Tube Supio. Appreciate that. Uh, and absolutely, Randy, they've been stealing forever and ever. Um, by the way, folks, if you get a chance, read the comments down here, man, and, and feel free to reply. Just do it civilly and nicely. There's some great conversations that go on amongst some of my viewers here in the comments section, and uh, I enjoy uh, reading them myself. Uh, John, and thanks for watching, Randy. I really appreciate it. Uh, John says, uh, looking at long-term chart, looks like trying to drop the price of silver at 16, like they did in 2000. That would be wonderful for these big short positions to be able to drop it to 16 to 18. But I think if they could have done it, John, they would have done it already. Uh, in my opinion, these big uh, these big short positions, uh, uh, you know, they're in the losing end of it right now. From what I hear, uh, Ted Butler says they're about eight billion dollars in losses as of right now for the the big four short positions or I forget if he says the big eight uh, and uh, one of the largest entity stands to lose about four billion or something correct me if I'm wrong but I believe that's what I read in one of his recent reports so they've got if they had wanted right down to that 18 it puts them at about a break-even point but again I may be speculating and incorrect on that as well I just don't see those levels, but it's not impossible. And again, if the greatest bubble of all time takes a giant dump, it'll take gold and silver paper prices with it, but you won't be able to buy physical at that price. Thanks for watching, John. Uh, Corey, uh, oh, Corey nailed it, counterparty risk. So if you give your, <laughs> thanks, Corey, appreciate that. I like that term, and unless anyone objects to that, I think I'm gonna use counterparty risk if I remember it. My short-term memory sucks of late, but uh, sucks getting old, you know that. I mean, some of you know that. Uh, Corey looks like a young man, though. He would know that. <laughs> Counterparty risk. Thank you very much. Uh, so if you let your grandma hold your gold and silver for you and grandma hides it and doesn't tell you where she hides it and it gets lost and you never find it, that's counterparty risk. 
If you let even a trusted ETF hold your silver for you, even if it's allocated and something bad happens to them, you lose your money, all right? You lose your silver. Uh, just because something's allocated doesn't mean that there's it's impossible to lose it. Uh, it's happened before, and we've talked about this before. Uh, the only way to avoid, truly avoid counterparty risk is holding the stuff you're, uh, on your own. Um, you know, and I know with silver that can be quite difficult. Uh, and if you're a multi-billionaire and you're holding huge, huge quantities of silver, I understand that may be even more uber difficult. And at that point you may have Comex hold your gold out of everyone. Uh, as uh, actually Ted Butler mentions that in his article this week, you know, letting them hold the contracts or something. But uh, uh, me, I don't like counterparty risk at all. I am very gun shy of it. Thanks for watching and thanks for that, Corey. I really appreciate that. If anyone says thinks counterparty risk is not the correct term to use, let me know uh, in the comment section below. Again, have a great day, Corey Michael. Thank you, sir. And Stephen, um, could second party be the government? Do we still have some risk of confiscation or heavy tax levies on a purchase or sale like the casino? The government can make up any rules that serves it. That's true, but Stephen, they don't need gold and silver from us. All they, With a stroke of a pen, they could steal billions of dollars from uh, uh, IRAs, retirement accounts, uh, people's pensions, you name it, with a stroke of a pen. If they, they, they try to confiscate gold or silver or put heavy taxes on it, it'll just go into the background. People will be dealing amongst themselves. You know, uh, Government's becoming having less and less credibility, uh, so they've got to be careful where they tread. If they actually try to confiscate gold and silver, I believe some people would probably start shooting back at them. Uh, thanks for watching, Stephen. Have yourself a happy holidays as well as the rest of you. I got to roll out of here. Hey, if you get a chance, share and hit that like button. I really appreciate it. I know some of you haven't really hit the subscribe button yet and you watch my show consistently, but please hit it. It's nice to know who's out there watching and, um, you know, uh, it, it does help in the numbers and the algorithms. Hey, thanks for watching. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Call me anytime between 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays. And of course, we're a local dealer only. We only deal in South Florida. So if you can't deal, come and deal with our brick and mortar store. Uh, I advise you find yourself a good local dealer in your area to deal with, even if you have to drive an hour or two to do it. And why? Because uh, the importance of uh, keeping that money local is super important. And uh, for me, I'm very competitive, and your local dealers can be very competitive. If they're not, they should be, uh, because it's pretty easy to beat the big Atmex guys, the SD bullion guys, and the JM bullion guys, because our overheads aren't as big. And most of us know where to get the product even cheaper than what they pay for it. Well, hey, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.